This is the 2022 Lincoln Navigator Reserve. It's the 4x4, it's the regular length, it's got the flight blue exterior, and the interior is a little bit unique. Look at this, look at this, look at this. We'll get to the interior in just a second. It's an interesting combination, and we're gonna unpack this Navigator a little bit different than the videos that I typically do. So this is gonna be a little bit more of a POV style, and we're gonna go over some different things with technology, but if you're looking for technology-specific walk-arounds, check down in the description below. I've put together some crazy comprehensive videos there. Now, I'm gonna unpack this bad boy. We're gonna learn everything we need to know about it, but before we do, I wanna give Yorkdale Lincoln a huge shout out and a thank you for giving me access to this vehicle to shoot the video for you guys today. You can find their contact information, the vehicle build details, and links to the build on the Lincoln website in the description below. And you'll be able to find those walkarounds for the technology down there as well. So let's unpack this Navigator and figure out what's going on with it. Now, I'm in Canada, so we're only eligible for the reserve model of the vehicle. And we can only get this thing in 4x4. Down in the States, you guys have the option for the standard, for the reserve, or for the black label, with each trim level giving you different choices and options and different packages that are available. Up in Canada, we can only get 4x4, versus down in the States, you've got the option for either 4x2 or 4x4. So you guys have a little bit of a leg up on us there. But the base styling is going to be the same regardless of whether you're in Canada or the States. We've got these incredible looking LED headlamps there, so jeweled lights that do offer dynamic bending, so they will follow the road as we go. We've got our LED tail, uh, we've got our fog lamps there, and then we've also got the forward sensing system. So you can make all those forward sensors. I love the grill inside of this thing. It looks fantastic. It's big, it's beefy. It needs to cool down the 3.5 turbo engine underneath, which we'll get to in a second. Nice Lincoln star along the front with our forward facing camera. So we've got our forward facing camera, our backup camera, and then our side view mounted cameras. So on our side view mirrors, which stitched together, give us a full 360 view. So this thing has a 360 camera. It can also help us out with park assist. It's kind of crazy. But if we look at some base styling, like I, I love it. Nice small little Easter egg for you there. We've got our Lincoln Motor Company along the headlamp as we start to move down. So those seem kind of like metallic highlights that we see in the front. So right underneath the grill, we've got a nice, Look there, moving down. That front highlight there follows through all the way to the back of the vehicle. So we've got that nice highlight right through at the body there. And we do also have power deployable running boards, which are amazing. Get to that one in a second. Another highlight, we've got our navigator badge right along the side. That's the same on the driver passenger side. Same metallic highlights that we see all the way through at the body of the vehicle. Moving towards the back end, we can see that highlight moving all the way through it as well. We've got a reverse sensing system there, so our reverse sensors. We've also got our backup camera, which does have a little sprayer nozzle on there as well. And then we've got the option for towing in this thing. So towing, we can get up to 8,700 pounds inside of the Navigator, just depending on which version of the vehicle that you go for, how you have it configured. Because the long versus the regular, 4x2 versus 4x4 will ultimately impact how much your vehicle is able to tow, but the numbers will show up. No, I love the tire styling inside of this. We've got a series of different options, not only for the tire size, but more specifically for the rim style of the vehicle. So we've got some different night packages, so a blacked out rim, which looks really, really sharp. At a very minimum, we will have 20 inch tires inside of this thing, up to 22 inch with a series of different styles that are available for the rim, just depending on which version of the vehicle you've gone for. But I do love the overall styling inside of this thing. It looks fairly sharp. Did mention we've got that Navigator badge, which looks incredible. Along the driver's side door, we do also have our five digit number there. So we can press the bottom two buttons there if we want to lock the door. And we've also got intelligent access. So as long as we've got the key fob on us, we can slide our hand in there to unlock. We can also press this little hamburger button to lock as well. But let's hop inside. Okay, I gotta say, that is a pretty nice interior, which we'll get to in a second. But looking along the driver's side door, so we do have a nice leather highlight there true wood that's also right along the middle and that look follows all the way throughout the dash into the center stack there as well looks really sharp now we do have our unlock lock button base window control we do have power folding side view mirrors 
window control buttons there as well. I should say side view mirror control, window control, our handle, lots and lots of storage. And we do also have our Lincoln badge right along the side there. Nice highlight in that will glow later on at night. And one thing we can't see just because of the time of day, we also do have some lamps there. So it will shine down. It's essentially Lincoln welcome lighting. That's welcoming us and embracing us to the vehicle. So essentially saying, hello, you're here, which looks really, really nice. But again, hopping inside. I love it. All of the micro stitching there. If we take a look, we've got this like nice gray stitching follows throughout the assist handle. And then even as we get into the driver's seat, looks really nice. Actually, it goes all the way through and it looks really, really sharp. I love it. But taking a peek. So one thing I didn't point out. So along the seat there, you can see we've got no buttons because we adjust the seat right along the side of the driver door. And that's the same for the driver passenger side. We've got three individual seat memory buttons. We can move the seat forwards, backwards, etc. using all the levers here. But we've also got the flexibility of adjusting each individual leg cushion as well. So we can move individual parts of the seat. So you can see there, left versus right side. So we can make this thing really, really comfortable for ourselves if we want to. It's phenomenal. Now, hopping inside, we do have our pedals there. So gas, uh, brake gas. We've got a release for underneath the hood, which let's actually go take a look underneath first. So as we go, I love it. Look at that front end. Those headlamps there, you can kind of see them flickering just because of the frame rate I'm shooting in right now, but they look sharp. Getting underneath, so if we go just above our Lincoln badge there, you can see we've got a little release. All we're gonna do is lift up, and we're on hydraulics, but ah, uh, look at this. 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. Very similar to what we're gonna find inside of the F-150, but it looks really, really nice. Now this thing is actually pretty powerful. Like it's 440 horsepower and 510 pound feet of torque. Kind of ridiculous what this thing's able to push out, but it is nice because this thing is a little bit of a beast of a ride, but you need it, you need it. Now, if you're handy, you're doing things, some things yourself, you could top up fluids if you want to. Changing oil is a little bit more challenging. You can see we've got our dipstick along the far side that I can just kind of barely reach. But I mean, if you want to do it, you can. No sort of engine cover for this thing, but as we move up our head, we do have our fire shield there, which looks fairly nice. Moving down, we've got our battery off to that left side as well. Now, you do have the flexibility, obviously, of doing some basic work yourself if you want to, but one of the nice things about being a Lincoln owner is that you do have the flexibility of looking at the concierge service. So what that means is a Lincoln owner, well, Lincoln owner, a Lincoln rep can come and pick your vehicle up to take it in for regularly scheduled maintenance, which is amazing. You can, if you're a black label customer, you will get included service there. And then if you're a Lincoln owner, that's either looking at the standard or the reserve, you can look at doing a factory option. Well, a factory option, I should say a dealer option in order to get prepaid maintenance packages instead. So if you're a bigger fan of just that, like set it and forget it, you just don't want to worry about it. It's just taken care of that is available as an option. But nice, nice, nice look. Oh, that's really sharp. <laughs> All right, let's do a little bit more rocking because this thing takes a little bit to get to go over everything. Just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel, a series of different buttons so we can open and close the trunk from the inside, turn our fog lamps on and off, adjust what's going on with our running lamps, and then increase and decrease the brightness of the cluster screen and that Sync 4 media screen. And that Sync 4 screen is brand new for the 2022 model year, and it looks phenomenal. We also do have power adjustable pedals. So we can move these things forwards and backwards as necessary. Obviously with a vehicle this size, might be something you need if you're a little bit shorter. The steering wheel is also gonna be a power telescoping, forwards, backwards, up and down. We can set up our steering wheel, we can set up our side view mirror, and we can also set up our seat. So we just use all the different options there. And then we can press and hold either one, two, or three to set up a unique profile for us. So if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle, you can set up individual settings there if you want to. But let's hop inside, get some impressions there. Oh, this is nice. Oh, this is really nice. So we've got our Lincoln logo there. We do have our adaptive cruise control system, so we can easily toggle this thing on or off. Series of other options, like this thing even has a head up display, which is fantastic. And then it also works in conjunction with our factory navigation. So we'd have factory navigation, it would show up in that head up display, which is amazing. We've got some paddle shifters there, turn signal, adjust our front and rear windshield wiper. 
And then this, you can see the beeping going crazy there. That's actually the Blue Cruise feature, so it's hands-free driving. So we do have our adaptive cruise control system, which can help out because it's essentially a set and forget it cruise. But the other option is hands-free driving, so you don't even need to worry about having your hands on the steering wheel. It's going to keep you perfectly balanced in your lane. It's going to follow the lane around as you go. It's a phenomenal system. But if you're looking for more of a walk around, you want to know how the steering wheel cluster screen work, you want to know about that, sync, that brand new Sync 4 media screen, check down in the description. I've put together a comprehensive video explaining everything you need to know about it, but it's phenomenal. Now, a few things to point out. So we are push button start inside the vehicle. Got a nice little welcome there. Look at the screen. So, so nice. Brand new for the 2022 model year. Looks phenomenal. Even that Sync 4 media screen looks fantastic. Ton of different options available inside of this thing. We've got our audio, we've got phone, we've got factory navigation, but we can also use Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze if we're hooked up through Android or Apple CarPlay. And then Android Auto, we're strictly gonna be Google Maps. We can add in a button for favorites. We've got different options for apps and even looking at the small details there. Like as we jump between the screens, just looks fantastic. Different options for features and things like that. And as we start to move down, so series of other options that are available, we've got this button that pulls up a 360 camera. So let me pop you back up there. So we've got a full 360 view. We can push the plus button if we want to zoom into different parts of the car as well. So, I mean, this thing is a beast of a ride, so it is useful. We can turn that beeping that we get as we back up on or off, press that hamburger button to go to that 360 mode, a front partial view, a front 180 degree view, we can see our hitch view, so if we're backing up to hook up a trailer, and then, ooh, that went away quick, and then we've also got our backup view there as well, so our rear view camera, back to that 360 again, so quite a few different options that are available. We just push that button again in order to get rid of it, and as we move down from there, we've got our four-way blinkers, park reverse neutral drive as well, so we've got our piano key shifters there, but I love it, nice metallic highlights, it looks so good! We've got our volume rocker. So ridiculous, like it's such a good song, such a great band, but such an amazing sound because of this Revel audio system, it's amazing. We can toggle that system on or off as well for our audio, change songs, radio stations. We can also lock out the rear console so people in the back can't control what's going on back there. We've got a tuning rocker to adjust this way if we want to. Down from there, we do also have our dual zone climate control. So we can make it out, we've got our dual zone climate settings, we can figure out what's going on with our rear windshield, our defroster, air conditioning, base controls there, we've got heated and ventilated first row seats as well, which is fantastic. We can adjust what's going on with our fan speed very easily there. We've got a menu button in order to, let me pop you up as I press, bam, so as you can see there, series of options that are available here. So we push menu, we can turn our audio, or our audio, our climate on or off, turn on our heated steering wheel. We can also have it go to our windshield face or feet, any combination. We've got this beautiful setup. I love the way that this looks. Like they did a phenomenal job on the, just the basic graphics here. We've got dual zone climate control or back just to our max defroster as well. So we've got a few options available. We can also toggle on our rear so we can lock them out if we want to. So we've got quite a few options. So we can lock out the rear climate so that they can't do anything there. We can turn it on or off. We can adjust as necessary. So it's kind of neat that's available there. And moving down to get to that rear again, it's just from the very bottom here. So just underneath this little switch there, we've got the main for us versus rear for everybody in the back. And then as you can see, so that wood grain that we have along the door, so that bottom part of the door throughout the dash, it also follows down the center stack here. So we've got this part wood and it is real wood, but you can see we do have a wireless charging pad, two USB ports, so there's a USB, USB-C, there's a 12 volt power point down there as well. Moving on the other side, button press there. We've got a few cup holders and then a little storage area there as well. As we start to move down, we've got an electronic parking brake, auto start stop system. This thing even has park assist. So the vehicle can help us out with parallel and perpendicular parking. If you want to know how that system works, check down in the description below. We've got an auto hold setting with, which, uh, with, auto setting, with auto hold turned on. If we're driving and we take our foot off the brake, it's going to hold the vehicle in place, which is fantastic. And as we start to move down from there, so this is actually kind of an interesting design. Like you'd think that you'd be able to lift these things up individually, but either way is a release in order to get into this. So we've got a fully removable tray. 
And on the inside here, we do have a 12 volt power point, and then a nice amount of like a good amount of storage space. Again, like almost elbow deep inside of this thing. And getting elbow deep can be tricky sometimes. So that's kind of nice. So tons of space available there. Really nice. As we start to move up overhead, we've got an auto dimming rear view mirror, series of different options for controls for the lights, but then also for the shade, because this thing, so we're going to open, close, etc., has a panoramic sunroof. Let's open that thing up the full way, but look at that. Opens things up really, really nicely. Now that's going to be standard in Canada. Down in the States, you do have to, if you're in the standard, look at an added package. But other than that, it's going to be standard across the board. But it's nice. We've got some basic options for vent control. And then opening this thing up. Up we go. Really, really nice. Now, single button press opens it up the majority of the way. Secondary button press opens it up that last little bit. Closing as necessary. We can also adjust the shade there. So opening, the, opening and closing the shade as necessary. So while it's doing its thing. All right, let's look up overhead again. We've also got this button, which this is going to fold down the headrest in the third row. So as you can see there, power down for the headrest, which is kind of unique. Up overhead from there, we do also have a little sunglasses holder. And then, ooh, that's neat. I wasn't sure what that was at first, but look at that. It's like a little convex mirror that lets us know or lets us see exactly what's going on behind us. I didn't even know that was there. That's so neat. Hello. <laughs> so cool. Small things, small things. We've got some base controls for our cabin lights, which I love it. We can just touch in order to turn these things on or off. We can turn as necessary there. Moving across, we also do have three individual settings. So we've got a garage door opener at home, business card holder, vanity mirror with built-in lights. And then this thing extends out to block all the sun, that's potentially gonna hit our eyes, which is definitely a nice thing. Now you can also make it out. We've got speakers all over the place, and that's part of this fantastic Revel audio system that's going to be standard in some trim levels of the vehicle. It sounds really nice, like I wonder. Oh, here we go. What a song! Welcome to the jungle really really nice so phenomenal and i only had that up at half volume and the car was like shaking it is phenomenal what's available inside of this thing i absolutely love it but the interior of this is great the seat very very comfortable like i i love it but if we go and we take a look at some other options one of the cool things is that we do have a button press so a hot button press in order to turn on massage chair seats look at this so massage seats is an option there we can adjust individual parts of the seat as well. And that's all done using the buttons along the side door. So we can hot button press on the left one there to turn our massage chair seats on. Circular, relax, recovery, tons of different options. And that's the same for the driver passenger side. So we can set this thing up if we'd like to. We can turn off the massage chair seat, which also gives us the flexibility of moving between a few different options. So we can adjust this thing, the, like the backrest, so many different ways. And that's one of the nice things because if you're a little bit picky with the way that your seat feels, the seat inside of the Navigator is ridiculously adjustable. Like we can adjust the headrest. You can see it going there. So four-way adjustable headrest, forwards, backwards as necessary. We can move the seat forwards, backwards. We can get the cushion to hug us even more because each part of the seat fully adjustable as we go. Like literally every part of the seat is adjustable inside of this thing. Like it is mind blowing what's capable inside of this vehicle. Like I, I absolutely love it. But size wise, like I'm six feet tall with my seat set up for somebody who's six feet tall, I've got about three inches of headspace there, but we can also bring the seat down. Down it goes, down it goes, down it goes. Okay, with the seat all the way down, What's that gonna be? About four and a half, maybe five inches of headspace there. So there's quite a lot of space inside of this vehicle. So you're a little bit taller, not gonna have an issue. I'm not sure if you can see it oh, from your vantage point. I'm gonna have to maybe do some B-roll for you there. You might just be able to make out that head up display. It's really challenging to see just with cameras. Like it's either gonna be flashing or just not visible. So I'll make sure that I've got some B-roll going so you can see it. It's really, really nice but the interior of this thing is phenomenal. Let's hop into the second row and see what's going on back there, because it is kind of crazy. Oh, I love it. Adjustable running boards. So these power adjustable boards, we can lock them down a few different ways. 
we can have it so that it's permanently locked down. They're permanently locked up or it's automatically, you, know, you can see there, it's back up. It's automatically gonna open or close just depending on what's happening. But it is nice that we've got so, much, so many options. Very similar to the first row, the styling carries through to the second row as well. So we've got our Revel Audio badge along the side. We've got some speakers there all throughout. Nice leather that matches what's going on in the inside there as well. A little storage tray, a window control, and our handle, along with some storage along the door. So that's the same for the driver passenger side. We do have a mini scuff plate along the side there, which is kind of neat. We can also fold the seat flat that way if we want to. So you can see we've got our tether point along the back. That's the same for the first and for the second row. And, or sorry, for the first, for the second and for the third row, I should say. But the seats are fantastic. Now, we can get into the third row very easily, but I'll show you that one in just a sec. There are some highlights I want to show you here. Now, this one that we're pulling in order to be able to fold the seat down, we can also pull it in order to recline the seat. But I'll show you in a second. Just in between our legs of the second row, we've got this little release. So we can pull that to slide the seat forwards and backwards. But on the top and side, look at this. Nice little storage space underneath. So we've got a few different configuration options we can look at inside of the Navigator. So whether we've got this, so we've got our console there, we can do the bench seat as an available option as well. So it's going to depend on how many seats do you need inside of this thing. So we've got a minimum of what, seven seats? with an optional eighth, just depending on what's going on here. But because this one has the console, look at the console and what this thing can do. So we've got a few cup holders here, but new for the 2022 model year, second row massage seats. Oh, I've got to try this. Upper rolling, lower rolling. Oh, let's do upper rolling. Oh, that's nice. So we've got a massage chair seats there, massage left versus right. It is really comfortable. We can turn this thing on off. Massage seats are resetting. Jumping back home. We've also got heated and ventilated second row seats, which is fantastic. Back home, we can adjust the climate for the second row within the back here, and adjust our fan speed, face or feet, etc. We can change out the audio from the second row here. We've got some different options for sources and things like that. Back again, we've got some different options for settings. So we can turn the display off. We can have it go to a calming screen instead. So many options that are available inside this thing. Like it is, it's mind boggling. And having massage chair seats and heated and ventilated second row seats, phenomenal. Now it's just second row seats. The third row seats aren't gonna be heated or ventilated whatsoever. And then a note just on the heated ventilated. Hold on, let me see. This is gonna be a test. Okay, so there was like obviously like a, you heard like sirens and things like that going. It's almost quiet on the inside. I can't really hear anything on the outside. It's so good. It's like that whole idea of like active noise cancellation. Phenomenal. But we do have a series of options, as I mentioned. So for the heated ventilated seats, it's strictly going to be for the outboard seats. So even if we get the option with a bench seat, so that other seat in the middle, that middle seat is never going to be heated whatsoever. It's strictly going to be that driver passenger side on the outside. Still nice that we've got that as an available option though. But as we start to move down a little, oh, hello. As we move down a little bit, you can see we've got another little armrest in that console there. Nice amount of storage space inside of this thing as well. We've got a little light in the back. And I already pointed out that we've got a little storage space under here. And then as we move across, we've got a series of different power points. So we've got two more USB ports. So another USB, USB-C. There's another 12 volt power point there as well. And we also have this, so a regular wall outlet. So a series of power points that are available. We've got some cup holders. Uh, down they go, haha, <laughs> so nice. Click that bad boy back up. And we can also control what's going on with the shade. So second row has the flexibility of adjusting the shade as well, which is phenomenal. So if kids are fighting, you've got the flexibility to be able to turn these things off. So even this main screen, you've got the flexibility through the Sync 4 media screen to turn this thing off. So you'd essentially be able to lock people out so they wouldn't be able to use this whatsoever. But it is really nice. The second row seats are really, really comfortable, like night and day comfort from the 2021 model. Like this is really, really nice two-way yeah only two-way adjustable headrest there but still it's really good we have our little assist handle there a hook we've also got some cabin control lights we can adjust what's going on with our fan 
for that driver passenger side. As you can see there, speakers again all over the place. Now I did mention we have the flexibility to recline the seats as well. So that's the lever that we pulled to, recline, to fold the seat down. We can go the opposite way and <laughs> create a little recline there as well. So really, really useful. You're going on distance trips and you want a little bit more of a comfortable experience. It is really nice. So being able to recline the seat with those massage chair seats on, you're traveling in style. It's phenomenal. Now a few things. Third row spacing is interesting because we've got our little console in the middle there. So getting into the third row obviously is not going to happen. If we've got that console in the middle, we can't just do a pass through. What we have to do, down they go, love it, is on the outside here, we've got two different ways that we can get into the back row. So way number one, we've got this handy little button there. So as you can see, lifts, and we can just fold this thing forward in order to get into the back row there. But the other option that we've got is along the very top. So we've got a little release up along the top there that you can make out. So we can pull that as well in order to be able to slide it forward. So, I mean, you saw there, I did it one handed, whether we do the button press there or we do the pull along the side, we've got a series of options. I did mention that we've got the anchor points there, or tethers, I should say. We've got the anchor points along the seat as well for that second and for the third row. But hopping into the third row. Oop, I forgot I lowered the headrest when we were in the first row. This is really comfortable. This is really comfortable. Oh, this is nice. So we've obviously got our bench seat, so 60-40 split, so 60 driver, 40% on the passenger. Adjust that bad boy out as necessary there. Got some things to highlight. Got a tiny little storage tray back there. Those anchor points, or tether points. We can also, oh yeah, I may as well do it on this side, but I'm here. So we can power recline the seat. Now it's not a big recline as you can see there, it's just a small one, but we can go up with it. <laughs> we can go back with it, which is really nice, but a few things to point out. So I'm six feet tall and with me sitting up back, just because of the recline in the seat there, my head's actually touching the back. So if I were to sit a little bit more upright, comfortable, but my same thing, my head's touching the very, very top back here. So with me being six feet tall, sitting in the third row, gonna be a little bit tight, not impossible. Like if you had to do it, you drew the short straw, you need to get a bunch of people in the truck, not impossible to do it. But just pointing out there, just something to think about, though taller people, they will be able to fit back here. But a little uncomfortable if you're like over six feet. Like if you're like six three, six four, it's gonna be tight in the third row. And as we move up overhead, we've got some base controls for our cabin lights. We can control the vents back here as well. We've got a hook along the driver passenger side there. So another little cargo hook. And we've got some cup holders there, a USB power point. And that USB power is gonna be the same on the driver passenger side in the third row. So it is nice that we've got that there as an option. But with the seat set up, so let's pull this bad boy. All right, there we go. So that would pretty much be uh, fairly close. I'm actually gonna do this because I know this seat set up for somebody who's six feet tall. All right, so with the seat kind of back all the way, my knees are just kind of touching there. So still a nice amount of space, but they are touching. I've got a nice amount of foot space though. And it's the same idea. So head space is the same. So like I said, six feet tall, you won't have an issue sitting back here if you need to. But I mean, at the same time, you do the short straw, you could sit back here comfortably and you could recline as necessary to make it a teeny bit more comfortable for you. Really nice though. I love the seats and like the third row seats are so comfortable. Oh, yes, I like smoke my head off the roof. Super comfortable seats back here, which is nice. I do wish we had third row massage seats, but at least we now have it in the second row. Amazing. It's available as a factory option. We've got our anchor points down there as well. And I mentioned that's the same for the third and for the second row. And then getting out, all we have to do, we can pull here, push and slide. So simple. Yeah. All right, so nice. And then slide and back she goes. But really, really straightforward. And as you can see, they're just so, so much space. It's kind of ridiculous, but a little bit realistic for some people all at the same time. Because I come from a family with nine kids. So something like this, like it's nice. We still would have probably needed this plus one. Like I remember growing, back, uh, growing up, we had the Ford Expedition, same size as the Navigator, and we still needed to have a spare car all at the same time, but amazing vehicles, I, I love it. Now, a few things to point out about the back here. 
We've got a nice Lincoln badge along the back. We've got our backup camera, which I already pointed out. And then we've got something that's unique. We've got this little guy, so little release. If we look underneath, we've got a few buttons. So we've got one off the left-hand side, and we've got one off to the right. So under the I in Lincoln, we've got a button. Under the last L in Lincoln, another button. Pushing this one releases the glass. Look at that. So you need to slide in some wood, things like that. You've got that flexibility. We can just pop the glass if we want to. We've got our rear wiper there. And then if we hit the other L, so the other button under the L in Lincoln, that's gonna be for our lift gate. Now, we could push that button in order to get inside. I did mention it, we do have that button to the left-hand side of the steering wheel we can push as well. If we look at the, I'm not playing pocket pool, I swear. We've got our key fob there. I'll show you some basic highlights of the fob. So we've got our unlock button, lock button, remote start, trunk release, horn or panic, and then our emergency access key there as well. So we can push the lock button once, circle button twice to, restart, to start the vehicle. We do also have the flexibility of using the Lincoln Way app on either Android or iPhone devices. We've got the flexibility of remote starting the vehicle. We can also roll our windows up, down, etc. We we've got the option of using our phone as a key. So you don't need to worry about bringing your key fob with you as long as you've got your cell phone. It's available there as an option, which is amazing. Now, one other cool thing is that we also have the flexibility of... Haha. <laughs> I was like, please work first time, <laughs> and it did. So we've got a foot activated power lift gate. Now this one is just the regular navigator, so it's not the extended length, but I mean, we've got a nice amount of cargo space in the back here. Not a ton, but I mean, if you don't need the extra space, you just need the seats, getting the regular length navigator might be in the books for you. And one cool thing, just off to the left-hand side, series of other things that are available. So we've got some base hooks there, cargo hooks, tiny little storage side on the left side nothing along the right except for a little light and then I mentioned so we've got these things here but we'll get to that in a second we do have this tray that we can slide up and lock in place cargo net we've got our jack stand for the vehicle because our spare tire is located just underneath so you're gonna go for a little ride here so we've got our spare tire underneath there taking a peek underneath it's like a little POV that you probably wouldn't normally see underneath your car, but it is nice. We've got our dual exhaust there as well. This is a cover for the tow package, or for the receiver. So all we'd have to do is lift this up and pull it off in order to access the receiver there. And I did mention, so towing is all over the place for the vehicle. It's just gonna depend on the configuration that, you've ha that you have in yours. But moving this thing back down again, and as I mentioned, we've got a series of buttons just to the left-hand side there. So, few buttons to point out. We do have power adjustable third row, our power folding third row seats. So we can fold them down individually or together. The second row seats are going to be a power down, but they're manual back up. We've got the flexibility of folding them down individually. So either the left or the right side, or we can fold them down together. So if we look at this, we button press. Let's see, down go the headrests. But look at the difference in the dimensions. Uh, look at the difference in the dimensions when we've got that second or the third row folded down. So it opens it up quite nicely there. And then we've also got the flexibility. So as I mentioned, to push this to lower both sides down as well for the second row. Nice slow fold. And then look at that cargo depth. Really, really nice that we've got that available as an option, but so much space. And as I mentioned, we've got all of our tether points there all the way throughout. Looks really, really nice. It's so good, but I mean, I say it all the time. If you need the space, you need the space. And having the flexibility to be able to power fold the seats in the third row is really nice. And like even bringing the seats back up again is not overly difficult. Like we hop back inside. Two seconds. <laughs> It's nice. It would be nice if it was a power up and down for the second row as well, but it is nice that we've at least got the flexibility to go up and down for the third row, just using a simple button press. Really cool. Now we do have the flexibility, so along the very top, we can also adjust the height. So let's say if the vehicle's like, oh, well, realistically, that thing's pretty high up as well, but if this, uh, you've got the flexibility of pulling this down, then we can just push and hold this button if you want to set a unique height as well. We can kind of adjust as necessary there. We can use this button in order to close. We can also do another foot swipe there. 
Oh, of course it didn't work this time. <laughs> we can button press in order to close it. Usually that works, it's just odd. It's interesting, so because we've got the toe pack, we've got to go, there's a very specific part on the left or the right hand side. But so, so many different options that are available. The base styling is great. The feature set that is available inside of this thing, also phenomenal. Like I love what Lincoln's done with it. The highlights from the 21 versus the 22, like that new Sync 4 media screen, I love it. It is such a phenomenal screen. There is a full walk around that's available for the vehicle as well. So check down in the description below in order to see that walk around video. But I did mention it at the start. In Canada, we're strictly looking at the reserve. We can get the regular or the extended length. Down in the States, you've got the standard, the reserve, or the black label. Black label has some pretty nice benefits though as well. So which way you go though is going to depend on your budget and what features and options are important for features and options are important for you. But that was a look at the Navigator, the brand new one for 2022. What did you think? I love it. Look at this. One thing I didn't point out, we've got our roof rails there. You've got the options for crossbars as well. Nice look for this ride. Lincoln did a phenomenal job. The color is interesting. It's the flight blue exterior. I'm a pretty big fan of blue. It's a metallic paint, which looks nice, but I was chatting with the GM here and he was saying that he, like obviously the black, like the black appearance package looks phenomenal. It's probably the way that he'd go. And I, I kind of agree with him on that one. That black on black look in the Navigator looks really, really sharp. But what did you think about this video? what did you think of the walk around? If you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. More than willing to talk you through any issues I may be having, we can bounce some ideas off of each other as well. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, share it with your social networks, and until I see you next time, take care. Auto hold setting, or sorry, our auto hold setting is down here. We've got our, so that's the auto hold setting. So auto hold, sorry, auto start stop. Oh, why is that difficult?